start. Okay. I'll just, just wait a minute to see um, because attendees just can join right now. Oh, yes, five people already. That's nice. Yeah, there are some people already coming in. So, welcome uh, already to the people that are in. We just give people some more time to, to join us before I really start. Uh, and yeah, we don't wait. So if people want to make the time shorter that we wait, you can uh, let us know uh, in the chat where they come from. We are really curious to hear that. Um, just uh, want to make all of you aware that this session will be recorded. Asheville, New North Carolina. Portrait behind on the wall is actually uh, Rosa Luxemburg, the namesake of our foundation. Um, you can also uh, later after we uh, finished our intro, uh, put your questions either in the, in the chat or in the q and We hope that we will have enough time to answer them. Uh, in the Make sure that that's all be from Cologne. Cologne. Aus Gölle. Hello. Um, okay, I think. I'm both from the area there, too. Great. Okay, I think um, we have, we can start now. Uh, and uh, still, people are coming in, but uh, we start now. Um, so welcome everyone. Uh, again, I just want to make you aware that uh, this uh, session will be, this panel will be recorded and will be available on YouTube after it is finished. Um, I am glad to welcome uh, Julia Schramm today. She is a member of the executive committee of the party Die Linke, the left in Germany. And we invited her as uh, the Rosa Luxemburg Stiftung New York office, because it is part of our mission to, uh, to offer information about uh, the German politics and especially German left politics to an audience, especially also in North America. Uh, some words about the foundation of the Luxemburg Stiftung uh, uh, is an uh, uh, a non-governmental non organization uh, dedicated to uh, civic education, political research. It is based in Berlin, Germany, and the office in New York is the office for the United States and Canada. Uh, it is in place in, uh, since 2012, and uh, hopefully we will welcome uh, people for in-person panels as well, uh, starting from next year but as the situation is now, it gives us the opportunity to invite people from Germany for our panels here without a lot of traveling and, <laughs> and also saving the climate in this way. So I'm very pleased and honored to welcome Julia Schramm. She is a member of the uh, executive committee of the party, the left, the left, Die Linke in Germany. Uh, she uh, used to be a member of the Pirate Party till 2016. Uh, and since then, she has been a member of the, board, uh, of the state branch in Berlin and now the uh, federal uh, ex executive committee or board of the party. Uh, she, won, she ran as a candidate herself in the last federal election. And this is the issue about the federal election. What happened in, in Germany? What happened at the federal election was happened to the left, to the Linke, and what does that all mean for the future of German politics in general, and for the future of the Linke, the left party, and the left in a, uh, as the supporter, a uh, political specter. Um, if a person would have fallen asleep uh, in May this year, 
and would have woken up at the uh, at the uh, election day, they would have been very astonished. <laughs> they would have expected to be the decision between the Greens and the Conservative Party and the Social Democrats somewhere. And the uh, Linke for sure was a respectable result in the parliament. And what happened on the election day was the Social Democratic Party got stronger than the Conservatives, the Greens did had their best result ever, but uh, still not uh, still uh, ten percent less than the conservatives. So the numbers were twenty five point seven for the Social Democrats, twenty four point one for the Christian Democratic Union, uh, eleven percent for eleven point five for the Liberals, ten point three for the AfD, the right wing party. And the left party barely made it into the parliament with 4.9%, which is just, which is below the 5% threshold that is point that is put before entering the parliament. But thanks to a special clause with three um, mandates that were won in the constituencies, the party still made it into the parliament. So my first question, how are you feeling, Julia, after how many weeks, four or five weeks after the elections? And uh, um, how was your mood? So first of all, we're still in the Bundestag and I'm actually right here because I'm also working for the parliamentary group in um, the Bundestag. So this is not bad, bad. <laughs> But of course, it's been depressing, to be honest. Um, and I'm really glad to be here and to get new perspectives and maybe some different discussions. And um, I just like talking in English too. So that's nice and I'm excited. But uh, in general, it has been depressing for quite a while. I was one of the few people seeing it coming um, I was one of the few people saying this is going to be bad, but when you are in the campaign and if when you're campaigning um, and a, be a part and you are a part of this election campaign and uh, nobody wants to hear that we're not going to make it. So it's not really possible to have a sincere discussion about that. And right now it's much more of a, yeah, it's still a depressing situation. It's a lot of blame gaming. And um, I just hope that we will keep, I don't know, at some point, the wounds will not be bleeding anymore. And we have a real discussion about the problems and how to change that. But as a whole, the whole election, I think for myself, what I took from the whole year is that the succession of Merkel was much more complicated than we thought. The fight about the power, about who's gonna be in charge and who's not was much more ugly than most of us expected, I guess. At least I did not expect it. The Greens did not expect it either. This is one of the reasons why they started high and kind of sunk, although they still have the best result in their um, history. So um, personally, I'm ambivalent. I feel and I see that the left in general is in a huge, huge problematic situation. I think that's um, apart from some islands, I guess, like when we look at Copenhagen now and so on, but in general, it's difficult um, and the conservative and also fascist movement have an uprise that is, or have a much more vital and much more, um, yeah, vital movement right now. And um, the left in general is depressed. Okay. We will talk about the uh, consequences of for the left and what is and how the debates are going on uh, in, a, in a moment. Uh, 
before that, let me just ask you uh, the uh, result made the Social Democrats, uh, the Greens and the Liberals to decide that they start negotiations to form a coalition government. Coalition governments, as our audience probably is aware of, uh, are very common in Germany because of our electoral system that allows multiple, uh, multiple parties to enter the, uh, the parliament. Uh, and uh, so the negotiations are going on. Uh, we hear different from uh, former negotiations. There's not much of, uh, about the outcome known yet. We hear some things. Uh, um, but generally, what is your assessment, uh, assessing the, the, the character of the parties uh, and also what we already know about the probable outcome of the negotiations? What will such a government, if they finally conclude uh, an agreement and form a government, what will such a government led by the Social Democrats with uh, the Liberals on the one side and the Greens on the other side, if you want to so, uh, want to say so, uh, what will that mean for the country? What will that mean for German politics? Um, first of all, I would like to say that after 16 years of um, Christian Democrats in charge with different partners, so there were, of course, the Social Democrats most of, most of the time, but also the Liberals for four years, um, the country was very fed up with the Christian Democrats. Um, they were not necessarily fed up with Merkel herself. And um, I think we're going to talk about Merkel also a bit. Um, but, and the left, and I think this was at some point a strategic failure to say, well, look, the Christian Democrats have to get out of this government. They they are they they have to go away, get get out of there. So and we need progressive new um, parties that take over government. So and suddenly there was this idea of the traffic light, as we say in German. So it's red, green, and or red, um, yellow, and green, or or as I say, traffic jam. But this is gonna. Um, need some elaboration further on. So this was, um, I think, the this is where this whole idea of the traffic light started, when it was clear that we don't want this. So um, Christian Democrats without Merkel anymore as part of the government. So and of course, um, at the beginning, the Social Democrats were the lame duck of the whole race. Everybody was like, oh my God, they're so whatever, we don't care and they're not gonna win. And they had like bad, bad, um, uh, their, <laughs> um, I forgot the word, their polls, thank you. Their polls, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm tired. I'm a bit tired, it's late here, also dark. So um, the polls were bad for them. Uh, last year, they were around like, 14, 15%. So nobody was expecting that they would come back. And, um, but they did a very good job um, by rearranging the party. They had um, elected two very leftist or left, like more left, left, um, um, like, um, person. Chairperson, it's very hard in English. I, I always like the chairs, um, so the executive chairs. So, and then they nominated um, Olaf Scholz as the candidate for chancellor who has been vice chancellor for a long time and is basically a kind of a, like he he's a male, Merkel. So Merkel is a woman from the Christian Democrats, and he's a man from the Social Democrats, which is politically kind of the same, to be honest. So, and then they were just quiet. They were just like not fighting at all. They were just putting up a very good facade up front, just no beef, nothing. And they just waited. 
And then the first, um, like the first class or the first idea of what the race would be um, or between whom was the Greens against the Christian Democrats. And um, the Greens did nominate Annalena Baerbock, which of course it was the first candidate for chancellor for the Greens and it had to be a woman. They claim themselves as a feminist party. So it was necessary to nominate a woman and a young woman too. She was born in 1980. So she's one of the 80s babies kind of. And um, she did a good job at the beginning. It was like kind of a girl boss energy and everybody was excited. And then the Christian Democrats started playing dirty, really dirty. And I feel that the Greens did not see that coming, which is odd to be honest, but they played dirty as hell to say it blatantly. And they just, it was just dirt. I mean, the Americans here, or as everybody who knows about American politics knows what it's like to have uh, this kind of, like the level of, um, Dirt, dirty campaigns and in Germany was the first time for me that this dirty campaign was that openly played and uh, I think the Greens and a lot of young people were like what this is just they're just lying it's just blatant lies and it was kind of a new thing so what the Christian Democrats said and they said look we can't have a woman a young woman as chancellor from the Green Party, which is supposed to be more left, we need a man with experience. The problem was that the man with experience was Olaf Scholz, the Social Democrat, and not the Christian Democratic candidate, Amin Laschet, who was more of a sluggish, lame duck, to be honest. And he made a lot of mistakes and he tried to be on the one hand, the classical, the classic, like he was a bit of a Mitt Romney, to be honest. Um, if I'm trying to compare him, like this on the one has like a German Mitt Romney. On the one side, this kind of a open-minded um, conservative and but still fiscally completely conservative. But then on the other side, the people did not, they didn't, they didn't like it. They didn't like that. They want, it was yeah, kind of a sluggish, not interesting person. So this was, I think, the whole situation that made it possible that the social Democrats became that strong. The liberals, we can talk, like I, I can talk about the liberals and their agenda and how, I can talk about this for hours, I guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and I, I don't can, have that much time. I have time for that, but I get crazy about this because this is such a. <sighs> they are the fuck boys of German politics. I'm telling you. So um, and and now we have this situation. The the Christian Democrats. Nobody wants them in the government. They go completely crazy, and they. It's it's it, it's it's a sad situation. I I mean I don't care about them, but it's a sad situation. So what's happening now, the traffic light has huge pressure to succeed, which means the, the liberals need to be on board, which means the left, uh, the, the social Democrats and the Greens have to be nice to them, which means they have to give them a lot. The social Democrats, on the other hand, they are just like, you know what? We are the strongest party there. We're going to be the chancellor. And actually, we don't care about anything else. And the Greens, they got into this situation kind of naive. They have really, really young and very progressive and very ambitious uh, parliamentary group. And I'm not seeing how they're going to do this, um, to be honest. I think they're going to form a government um, because Habeck, the Green Party leader, he is much... He's very flexible, he's very pragmatic, but I kind of I feel naive too. And uh, the liberals, they just play the game. And um, I think they're gonna do a lot of positive things on the surface. They're gonna do a lot of symbolic um, uh, policies, for example, legalizing cannabis. Um, they're gonna probably, have a really 
strong um, legislation on social, on symbolic social justices or equality, like when it comes to um, discrimination against trans people, for example, um, and so on. But I think that's going to wash off after a few weeks of excitement. And then there is the, the hard facts and the question about how to stop climate change. What is about um, foreign policies? What about the uh, social, um, social cuts in, in light of uh, a huge amount of debt following the corona crisis? What about the health system that is on the edge? So there's a lot of questions when it comes to economic um, decisions about, and so on. Um, and I think about invest, uh, um, investing into the future. And I think also like interior politics, what about uh, de deportation? What about um, um, police and what about, and so on. And I think they're not gonna, you know, the social Democrats, they gonna try to moderate to some point. And they just see that the Greens and Liberals are fighting with each other and um, the Liberals will win at the end when it comes to the tough questions, when it comes to economic and uh, fiscal um, decisions. And there is not going to change a lot. Even more, I fear or I feel that they even do... Um, more social and fiscal restrictions and um, the social division division that social division is going to be stronger um, than ever. Okay, so you already said uh, the the campaign hasn't been a lot about uh, real issues as well. It was a lot about who uh, uh, wasn't correct in their CV and who uh, didn't quote correctly in a book and. Uh, who laughed in the background uh, while the president, the, the federal president, was addressing the, the victims of the flood? So uh, a lot of uh, things that are not really political in a way. Uh, but if we, uh, if people had been asked, what is this election about? I think the absolutely predominant question was climate, uh, wasn't it? So, uh, and we just come out of the. Uh, the COP in Glasgow, where uh, a lot of people have a huge problem to see the, the class even half full uh, after this, uh, uh, what happened in the, in the COP. So um, will this uh, government, in your opinion, be able to, uh, to address the, the climate problems and, and do a climate politics, not just in Germany, but also as an example uh, in the world? No. <laughs> In short, I, I look, I mean, it's it is very difficult <laughs> as like the way we live in Germany, but also in parts of the Western industrialized civilization, it is really, really tough to implement policies to at least reduce um, global warming to one to, to 1.5%. That it's tough because it's it, it, the, the way we live needs to change to some degree. But, and that's a, that's like a, that's a huge task. But even, and this is what I'm fearing the most, even, even on the, on this, like on simple steps compared, even steps that are absolutely manageable within the power of the German government when it comes to mobility, when it comes to um, to in, uh, investing in um, renewable resources and so on. There is a lot that they can do, but they won't because it needs the question it comes down to climate when we talk about climate change and measurements against um, global warming it comes down to investing 
you need to invest a lot of money in the next years. It's a billion, pro it's like Biden, I mean, Biden is trying to do the same. He, he understood, he, he, he has understand, he has understood. Ugh. Um, and a lot of, in Germany too, a lot of um, politicians have understand or have understood or have been understanding um, that we need to take money and invest in renewable resources. We need to change the way we um, move. We need to change the way we um, also um, we eat. And this is a huge question. And I'm not, you know, the, the whole vegan debate. I don't want to talk about the vegan debate um, now. <laughs> of course, it's a, you know, talking about food, it's 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 weird, but it is it in the we need to invest and um the liberals don't believe in that. They don't. They not at all. I mean, the, the so social Democrats are, they are a bit sluggish too. They, I mean, they are an old party and have been in power forever. So of course, and they're very middle class and bourgeois at some to some degree, of course, but they know that, you know, making debt isn't the worst thing when you invest in the future. Um, and the Greens, of course, too, but the liberals, they just, they, just want that the private sector invests. That's it. And that's not going to work because the um, taxes and everything that um, uh, companies has to have to pay has been reduced and the private in this in uh, uh, the private investors, I'm sorry, investments, investments um, have been um, the same for 20 years now. So they, there were a lot of trying to make pri the private sector to invest, but they did not. They just, I don't know, build a new pool or something for themselves, so, like the CEOs. So there's a lot to do for, for the opposition in the, uh, in the parliament. So unfortunately, opposition uh, consists in the majority so we're going to talk about us now. <laughs> the, of the, I, you, you, you guess it. Uh, I, it consists in majority of the conservatives and uh, the even farther right uh, AFD, so almost uh, fascist, and the um, and a very small and weak left party. So the only opposition from the left is is the the link of the left. Um, People, uh, I remember when uh, the party just was founded in uh, 2007 uh, and uh, when we had our big successes in 2009, uh, people all around the, wor the world have asked us, uh, how have you done that? How made, did you make the, the left so successful? Successful in terms of the left in Germany, it's never, been even close to a majority, but the, the, to have a radical left party in the in the uh, national parliament in a strong position around ten percent was something new in Germany. So, of course, the question is now: What did the left do? How did it happen <laughs> to the left? Uh, uh, some people are talking about. Uh, it's a kind of a suspended death penalty. So you are uh, already shot, but you get last chance for the next uh, being elected for again for years. Um, what happened uh, in a situation where uh, there was, I think, space for the political demands of the Linke for social justice and for uh, a climate poli policy that is so just at, at the end too. Um, why did that not resonate with the, with the electorate? Um, in short, the circumstances were tough, then unfortunate, and then we did other mistakes. So, I think 
it's a it's a it's a huge topic, of course. But I think um, the German left is really an interesting. Uh, it's in, it, it, I mean, Germany as a whole is interesting because it's the only country um, in Europe um, or one of the few countries that has this division between East and West still. And on the one side, you have the East that is stamped by or is much closer when it comes to some mentality questions to the classical um, Soviet post-Soviet bloc. And you see a lot of problems that you see in the Eastern Germany, you see in, in Czech Republic, in um, Estonia whatsoever, when it comes to left politics or left-wing politics. And on the other side, you have the Western part, which is much more transatlantic and much more, um, much more free market oriented and so on. So that, 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 I think that's, um, that's the, um, the problem that we are facing or which makes it also very interesting. So, and then you have on the one side, of course, in the nineties, you had the party that you actually joined back then, the party of the um, democratic socialist, socialism, which was of course in the nineties, very successful in the, in the East because the injustice of the way the East was treated after the fall of the Berlin Wall and after the uh, after the um, um, uh, the end of the Soviet Union, it was a much more of a protest against it and a much more or well, was a lot of just we don't care actually what you're standing for. We just feel that you address this injustice. So and then um, after coal, sixteen years of coal, and then the first red green or social democrats and green coalition came and everybody was super excited and it was a lot of disappointments there um talking about kosovo conflict or the war in kosovo also the uh, agenda 2010 where there were a lot of social cuts and so on so and then the west or the 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 social democrats in the west lost a, a huge part of their original constituency and membership. And this was the, the party that was merged with the, with the, the um, PDS. So it became the Lincoln. And after this, we just addressed the injustice in the East. A lot of what happened was we, want to repair the social democrat the social democrats so it was kind of a social democratic repair station um it's it's hard to translate but you know maybe probably you guess what i'm saying so what the the left said was we um we fight for real social policies or we fight and one of the um, talking points always has been and was, or was and still is kind of in a way. So the social Democrats need to be social again. And this is what they actually did. They, this is what the social Democrats did in this campaign. They, I mean, not really when you look close to it, but people don't care. Let's be honest, they don't care about the finesse of policies and about the um, details that you, you know. So, as, and especially in the West, the social Democrats are still the left. For example, um, the little town of coming from close to Cologne, there was a young man running for mayor in 2020, last year. So, and he was a social Democrat and he was the first social democratic mayor in this town and people call them communist. So this is what happened, I guess, um, as a whole, which is why the left lost or is lost right now. They don't have a purpose when it comes down to it. So for social democratic, uh, so for social democratic policies, like real social democratic policies, very reformistic, we do have a social democratic party 
And then on the other side, you can't win with revolutionary <laughs> and very, um, very revolutionary um, ideas. So I think it's a kind of, we need to find ourselves again in a way, or we need to find a purpose for ourselves. And when you talk about social injustice and so on, I think there's a lot of topics that we can address um, and a lot of ideas, but I mean, this is what the problem is in the left or the global left, I'd say. Um, we tend to pick on each other and we tend to um, burn all the resources we have um, against each other. Um, I don't know if you know the, there is a, an essay by Mark Fisher about the vampire's castle I've been reading and it's very depressing. And I mean, he took his life, of course, but um, it shows in a really tough and really precise way how the left lost itself in itself by fighting each other. And I think the German left but I think like the English, like what they're doing with labor, they fighting, I mean, they just kicking out each other now, right? If I see it right, if I have a good, uh, if, if I remember right, they just, I, I just read like kicking each other, <laughs> kicking each other out of the party. That's, uh, it's tough, but um, I don't know that I think that's why we did not make it and at le in the end um a lot of people just associated the left with fighting each other with being mean to each other and then of course it was the question who is the successor or who's gonna uh, who's gonna come after merkel and then it was like Laschet or scholz and the people even if they don't like the social democrats that voted for the social democrats because they said no this Laschet guy no 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 this can't be him okay so uh you already mentioned uh the left loves uh, also fighting about who is the the right the correct left uh and who is not uh in this situation of course there is a lot of debate inside the party i don't want to go too far into the details uh because we want people give a chance to ask questions and i encourage you already to to put your questions either into the q a's or into the into the chat before uh but before that I, i'd like to maybe give a, a sketch of how the how the debate is going on now in the party. Uh, I know we all have our own standpoints, uh, but maybe you can just try to be objective and give the, the, the main lines of the debate right now. Um, I'd say, it did, no, let, let, me, let me put it that way. So I think, um, that the German left has been divisive on every important so, um, on every important debate for a decade now. So every important debate that fueled kind of a passionate debate within society was a divisive topic within the party itself. Um, I can date that, like I, I did a, like a, a dating list, <laughs> a list of dates or important debates that we had in Germany in the last decade. And it started with the fiscal pact in the European fiscal pact in 2013 um, and the so-called debt crisis in Greece, where the question was whether to widen the credit line or to give more credit to Greece or not. And of course, there were arguments before in favor and against it. In favor was, of course, I mean, we can't, you know, they need the money. 
they need to run the country. I mean, this is barbaric. And on the other side, it was the um, the arguments where, well, but the money and the, the, the loans or the, the, the credit comes with a lot of social cuts. We can't do this. We can't support this. So this is where the, when the, the parliamentary group in the Bundestag, the left, started to vote varying, varying voting, I'd say, <laughs> as a, you know, and then it started. And then the, the crim, the debate about the crim in 2014 was the next one, where you have like, when you, when you, when you think about um, the left with, is, I mean, in Eastern Germany, a lot of people are much more in favor of Russia than in the West. That's like a, a completely independent from the party they support. So, and then 2015, migration, to 2016, Brexit and Trump. On every huge debate, we had not, a, not at least a common ground. And it's not that it's just some people, you know, some, um, some uh, popular people expressing those varying um, opinions. It's the party itself. On every issue, the party is split into 30, 70, 40, 60, 50, 50, um, down to the last member uh, without any function. As a, as a so, and, then, and this, we, I mean, it, when you say, when you, when you ask me if I can, or if I have an opinion where the debate is going, I don't know, actually. I just know that on every issue, I mean, it depends on the issue. So and on the one side, I'd say, and I'd say on the one side, it is more of a progressive, more revolutionary, more global um, and modern way of performing and seeing the way of or seeing the world. And on the other hand, it's much more, it's a bit like culturally conservative, it's more of a more pessimistic in a way. So it's much more, it's not about issues at some point or about the, the, uh, the goals or the, the, the general vision of how society should be. It's more a question of performance, of tone, of, and so on. It surprised me a bit because uh, I, I remember that uh... In the, in, the, in the times, even when we were really struggling, uh, the, the party was really struggling, the, the, the heads always say, well, well, remember we have, I mean, uh, a reserve of 80% of our programmatic issues that we agree on at least. And that is much more that you can, as, uh, much more than you could say about, for instance, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Joe Biden. They would probably not be in the same party in Germany. Um, they would not. Uh, so and uh, no, no, no. But you know, uh, and, and like so, we have three democratic parties in Germany. Yeah. yeah. So um, when when it comes to yeah, uh, you you already gave this this idea how how uh, divided the party can be on issues, and. Uh, so they they are uh, divided too on the on the question what is the, was the reason for this uh, uh, this catastrophe in, in the elections, um, but we did that this was uh, would be uh, of course uh, also I mean it's a precondition to find a way out of it. So um, you don't see any. Uh, what, what is the the, the party? Uh, I decide? see prospects. <laughs> I do. What, I do. What, what did the party decide to to do? Uh, how to, did they decide to deal with the situation now? I mean, obviously, it is necessary. With the election, with the with the election and the situation the party is in now. I mean, it means also uh, a material problems for the party, right? Okay. Um... Let me say this when when you when you mentioned Joe Biden and Alexander Cortez Ocasio Cortez, I think if Germany had the same electoral system as U.S., 
the Greens, the Social Democrats, and the left were one party. True. And I think because of the history, the way Germany developed or that has been developing in the last 50 years, you have three parties and actually you have in every party, you have people that are not supposed to be in one party. So for example, in my mind, it actually would make sense to have a unified social democratic left and green party because the greens they founded themselves in protest to the social democrats in in the old uh, in in the west in western germany um in the at the end of the 1970s so and the part of the left was also founded in protest of the social democrats in 2005 with the election alternative social justice was it um yeah yeah was the labor and social uh, and, and labor and social yeah exactly so i i feel that you know actually when we put if we put all the politicians in those three parties in one party and then mix it up the different um lines of polit uh, of political uh, ideas and a political performance and the way they think would be completely different. So I think that, for example, I would be much more, I don't know, maybe much more in the middle of this, of the social, of the, of a democratic party, but leaning towards the left, whether other people that are in the left would be much more suited for Joe Biden policies. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So it's just an idea that I have that we have this splitted um, democratic left-wing part of political um, parties because of the system and so on and so on. Um, but I, I hope that makes sense. Uh, and this is why the, the of course, the, um, and the parties within the spectrum, they just steal each other votes and this is why and i think this was a question that somebody said jim barton said yeah um, what I, can, about I can read it i can read it out of, um but we can i mean I, we, we can talk about this with the coalition uh, more that more in debt after that but um i just wanted to say that um that the the fighting against each other between the left and the Greens and the Social Democrats, it's really rude and really tough. And it's really mean at some, uh, at some point. And I think that's really what's happening now in, this, in the Democratic Party in the US, but it's one party and we have three, um, but it's the same spectrum in, in a way. But I see a lot of prospects. I do see prospects. I think we like, Right now in the German left, there, it's just depression. I'm I'm honest. I'm just brutally honest. It's just an it's just a depressive state of mind, and I hope that's gonna change in the next year, and that we're gonna get new spirit and new ideas. And the traffic light seems to be a traffic jam already, and they're not even a formal government yet. So there are a lot of chances. I hope we use these prospects to show, I think there are four points where we can address our criticism and where we can you know, attack. That's of course, questions of social cuts. That's the question of how do you wanna finance all this stuff? I, I, in German, we, I, I tried to is establish the hashtag Finance voodoo, financial voodoo. Um, I tried to translate that into English and it felt like money mumbo jumbo or something. So it's like completely, it's not at all um, a very, it's just voodoo, what they're doing and we can attack that. And of course, we are the only party that 
actually is when it comes to foreign policies that is kind of critical towards militarization and wars. Everyone else is like, okay, let's do that shit. Let's just bomb shit. And um, we're, we're not doing this. And I think that's, that's a chance for us. And last but not least, of course, this traffic light coalition is progressive neoliberalism as Nancy Fraser um, called it in prime. It's just like, that's, that's, if you want to know what progressive neoliberalism means, that's it. This coalition is progressive neoliberalism. I, I say now, and I think I'm going to be proven right in the next months and years, maybe, because they just be, they're going to be very cool, modern, digitalized on the surface. So you have an app that says you're poor. And you know you can get your um, welfare with an app, and it's still not much, it's not enough to live. So, but it's an app, and then of course you have all this symbolic um, things they're gonna do, and that's it. And I think those four um, points or four um, aspect of this coalition give us the chance to come back. I'm glad that you gave it a, a positive turn at the end. Uh, um, we got, we gave, uh, we gave us uh, an hour, so there are eight, eight minutes left, and we have a pretty interesting question, for, a very interesting question from Jim. Thank you for this very good question, Jim. Um, and we have already touched to that, but uh, this question goes a bit further. I heard that numerous Greens didn't want to have a coalition with the left due to ecstasy and pro-Putin concerns. Is this echoed in the other side among some people in the left? I have heard that there are a number of cities and provinces uh, uh, or states that do have a coalition uh, that include the left and I uh, you know that in Berlin. Yes, well, although it's hard, it's hard with the, with the Greens right now. Yeah, <laughs> I, I can imagine. I was in the negotiations once. Okay, so do you want to- I answer? try to be yeah. short. Yeah, try to be short. <laughs> well, as I said before, so we have this like leftist or yeah, leftist um, spectrum um, within three parties. And those three parties, they have a really, really difficult history um, as a whole though so there, there's you, you just said that in your question is like the Stasi and the Putin and the and the Kosovo and the Agenda 2010 and like there's a lot of disparity and a lot of problems and the people that are still in charge are still they have a history with each other which makes it hard so for example just say one example to, to show that, um, that we have a lot of, like the, one of our more prominent politicians, uh, Jan Korte, which is the, um, I don't know, what's it, what's it in English? Uh, like he, oh, like he's a kind of the whip, <laughs> the whip of our parliamentar parliamentary group. So, and he used to be a member of the Green Party. And he, he, like he's 45 or something. So he's quite young in terms of, you know, in, polit in political terms. So he was a member of the Green Party and he left the Green Party because of the war in Kosovo. He, he's not, you know, he, he can't go, he, like it's hard for him on a, on a federal level. It's hard for him to just say, well, look, you know, I don't care about the Kosovo anymore. Let's do shit together. It is, it is, it is a problem. And it's just one example. I, I can, I can give you a million examples where these three parties have personal issues with each other because of the Stasi and because of 19, I don't know, 83 or 19. And in every year, there's an example. So for example, the last, the last leader or one of the, the founders of the party, Oskar Lafontaine, he had a huge fight with the Gerhard Schröder who was chancellor for the SPD. 
you see my you see you get my point i guess so that is a really huge problem um and of course we have a lot of coalitions and a lot of um cooperation on a lot of levels but in the last uh, i think that, yeah the last election at some point the social democrats and greens they were just like look if the left doesn't make it to the parliament anymore we can do green a green uh or let um a red green coalition and we were like okay look we still going to be in the parliament no matter what you think and we made it so then i have to deal with the fuck boys of german policy uh, politics so i think the i feel that um Oh, <laughs> this echoes the difficulty of a 1930 German popular front due to anger at Rosa. Yes, they still seriously in uh, in the social in, on social media, like young people, they fight about the murderers of Karl Liebknecht and Rosa. They are like 19, and then mm. one is one is in the left, and the one is in the social, but it's with the social democrats. And like, you killed Rosa. No, we did not. It's like. <laughs> okay you're 19 it's 2021 what is happening here so yeah that's that is a problem um there's a lot of i think in general in the left there's a lot of we at some point i feel the left feels it's the lost cause and that we are losing this fight or this cultural war or that we lose it with so and so we fight with each other to pretend to have relevancy at some point I feel and uh, I just hope that changes uh, I think the world will um, give us enough tasks to tackle and a lot of problems um, and uh, at some point we have to act and we have to fight together and i think that is a prospect i'm looking forward to i mean the left was not you know the nazis didn't didn't make it to vanish or to make the um left or communist vanish we did survive the cold war we did survive the war after the cold war i'm not sure if that's the end of it and i'm not i'm refusing to to accept this and I think uh, maybe in two or three years, we're going to have a talk again. Like, I, we don't know how this happened, but we are back in the game. And I think <laughs> that is, um, that's the prospect. Like, maybe it's totally naive and at some point completely delusional. <laughs> but uh, I think we're going to be back at some point and uh, we just have to figure out stuff. I don't know. Maybe we just like, I don't know. And well, you well, ask. Like, also, you have, unfortunately, you have, you have to. To wrap up, and I think that was a good point. Uh, what you last said, I, as uh, Jake O'Reilly said, I, as, as far as I recall, it was him who said, uh, Let's be realistic, let's try the impossible. Uh, <laughs> and um, and it, it, it seems not even to be totally impossible. And there is a task for the left, as you said, uh, especially in this uh, situation where the linker is the only left uh the, the only left opposition in the, in the german bundestag we didn't even touch to the question of the far right and to the danger of the far right not just in in uh germany but all over europe uh that would be probably uh we have worked on that you find uh, a good publication about that on our website and i just wanted to mention there was not only bad news on this uh september 27th there was also uh the referendum in berlin about the socialization of uh of a big uh, real estate companies uh, mm. in order to bring uh housing more housing in public hands and it succeeded with 65 percent something like that really uh, a vast, vast majority and we will do uh that's the promotion part we will do a panel about this with uh, uh the member of the, the berlin house of representative katalin gernburg with uh new york state assemblywoman farah 
um, oh god i forgot the second name uh, and um was a representative of uh, the initiative behind this far as different forest thank you very much maria uh, and um with the initiative a representative of the initiative behind this referendum that will happen on uh, December the 2nd at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And you are all very much invited to take part. Uh, for now, uh, you unfortunately have to conclude already. Thank you very much for you, Julia for being with us and good luck for your work uh, in the party and in the parliament and best Best regards to all the comrades uh, in Berlin, and uh, we will overcome. We will. Thank you very much, and thank you for being interested and asking questions. And uh, maybe um, I will be back and we can talk again. And I think there's also one question. If I did a US visit speaking tour, yes, I've been to the US, and uh, I we will keep. We will keep the uh, uh, audience updated about social uh, about left politics and why not a speaking tour. <laughs> we will have. Oh, thank you very much and have a nice afternoon. And I thank will you have very much. Have a good evening. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Bye.